Warning, this video may contain strong language, violence, and brief nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. And now, our feature presentation. My name is Tara, Tara Prancer. I'm sure you guys know me by now. If not, then you didn't miss much. In fact, I don't miss the shit that happened to me a couple years back. It was horrifying to go through. This drunk bastard here, his name is John Yest, the bane of my existence. He was the guy who killed the greatest friend I've had in the whole entire world, my sister Wendy. Him and his gang attacked us during the time of her demise and I was too weak to do anything about it. Until I met this nice guy named Mick Brandon, my new boyfriend and a former police officer. He helped me track down John and the rest of those pricks who helped him murder Wendy, and gave me everything I needed to punish them. I must say, it's a dish best served cold when it comes to my revenge. However, I was arrested after I went on the killing spree, and I was taken to jail, and I remained in there for six months after a meeting with Mick, the chief, and my other friend Cassie. During my time also, there was one little thing that kept me company while I was there. Wendy's little red crystal gem. It obviously reminded me of Wendy, and I was glad that she gave it to me before she got killed. Really, it was all that I have left of her. It also gave me some sort of power that I don't even know. And I've suffered several concussions with scary little flashbacks that I try to unsee, but can't. So, what the hell happened to me now? While I was released on bail by my grandfather, I eventually fell in love with Mick. Mick had decided to leave the police station, resigning from being an officer. We got together, and now we work as merchants. Well, it's mostly me as the merchant, while Mick also became an independent martial arts trainer as well. Before I could tell you all about where we are now, <sighs> I gotta take my motorcycle to a garage shop to get it fixed. After a crazy recap from her past events, we begin this newest adventure with Tara driving her motorcycle. As she is on her way to a local garage to get it fixed, she eventually arrives at the place, only to find that it's an innocent looking place on the outside. But inside, it's something else. Inside the garage, we see four gang members running the show, drinking, hanging around broken cars, playing video games, and music playing on the radio. Gotcha! Maximus wins. Fatality! How the hell are you gonna cheat like that? What? I just beat your ass and did a finishing move on you. What did you expect? That's how the game works. It's not Street Fighter, nor is it Tekken. It's a cheap ass Mortal Kombat knockoff. That's what it is. Hey. Take a chill pill, guys. We got customers coming with their vehicles. Yeah, just act professional so we can take their green papers and give them a nice little repair. Or will it be a nice repair? Trying to park at a spot she wants to park in, Tara runs into a customer who just happens to be in her way. She startles the guy in the process. Hey, watch where you're going with that, miss. My bad. <laughs> I must have been looking at something else that was in my way while I was trying to park my bike. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Get off the fucking parking spot before I run you over next time. Okay, sorry. I wasn't paying attention this time. You got me there. Then I'm sorry if I got a little irate and scared you there. I'm in a little hurry here. Tara gets off her motorcycle, and her and the customer head close to the garage. You're going in first, or do you want me to go? No, you go first. Okay, cool. I got my car in the garage, and I was supposed to come pick it up today. I had to get a new battery for it. It won't turn over and everything. 
Good luck. Thanks. Tara lets the customer go inside the garage while she chooses to wait outside. The customer enters the garage to come pick up his car. Hello, sir. Can we help you with something? Yes, I came to pick up my car. Hopefully you guys already had a new battery installed in it. It's been two days. Sure thing. We'll take you to it. Come on. One of the gang members get together to try going behind the customer's back. Psst. Hey, go follow them. Make sure that customer doesn't come back out alive. Great. Meanwhile, back outside the garage, Tara gets on the phone with her boyfriend, Mick. Hey, Mickey, babe. Hey, Tara. What's up? Oh, I'm just sitting out here, waiting to take my bike to the garage. Someone else is in there right now. Oh, okay. I'd be careful out there if I were you. I've heard that some of the garages out there aren't actually garages, but gang hideouts. They can't take anything but your life if you go into one of those. Oh, silly me. I must have arrived at the wrong place then. Tara reaches for her pistol from behind and takes it out. Back inside the garage, one of the gang members open up the hood of the customer's car to check if the battery has been replaced or not. Well, would you look at that? I think the new battery for this car is not in all the way. Sir, would you like to take a closer look inside to see? Uh, sure. Little does the customer know, the gang members were planning to murder him the moment he stepped into the place. One of them draws their gun on the customer. The customer then draws his attention to them. Sweet dreams, motherfucker. What? I said, sweet dreams, motherfucker. No, no. The customer is then shot and killed by the gang members. Tara finally heads inside the garage with her motorcycle. Hello? This place is open, right? Sure is. Wait here for a moment, please. Okay, then. Tara looks around the garage, only to find no signs of the customer, and that the place seems to run like a normal business, which could possibly end up being a cover-up. One of the gang members then walks up close to Tara to greet her, and pretends to be nice. Is this motorcycle yours, miss? Yeah, it just needs a new engine in it. I want it to be fast as shit, you know? You know, you look familiar. I do? Yeah. You actually do. Hey, do you remember that video where those bathers killed that other girl? Yeah, I do. That was some sick stuff. Was that her sister? Of course people know about that shitty video. I don't want to talk about it. I say, we give this person a half off price for her motorcycle. How about that? Sounds good. Sounds great. The gang members then walk away from Tara to come up with a plan to kill Tara and do something bad to her motorcycle. Cut the motorcycle in half. Got it? Yeah. And then cut the girl in half. Tara continues to look around the garage. What happened to the other guy that was here? The other customer, I mean. Oh, he went to the restroom. The restroom? Yeah. You know, I'm actually finding that hard to believe. Tara starts to walk further to the back of the garage. As she starts to get curious to know where the customer is, the gang members start to look at her and try to go stop her. Ma'am, can you actually come back another time? Maybe your bike needs a lot of work. Come back in a week, okay? No, I actually want a new engine for it. Nothing more. Fuck coming back in a week. Tara goes to a closet and opens it to find a new engine for her motorcycle, but finds the customer's corpse instead as it falls out of the closet. Tara then quickly backs away from it as the smell was getting worse. Hey, what are you doing? Get away from there. You have no access. As the gang members were getting close to Tara, she takes out her two guns and draws them on the gang members. You know what? I kind of knew this place was bullshit. What are you going to do? Kill me and try to hide me in places where it's noticeable too? The gang members then take their guns out and draws them on Tara. You're going to end up just like him and your sister. You all deserve to die. 
I might need that bike, you know. Just so I can drive it off a cliff. <laughs> you got nowhere else to go, bitch. Oh yeah? I want to hear you call me that again so I can cut your wiener off, prick. Do it, bitch. Here's what I think of your bitch. The shootout begins as Tara opens fire at the gang members while they try to do the same and avoid each shot being fired at them. Tara eventually kills one of the gang members and manages to run fast and hide somewhere where they couldn't find her. Where did she go? I don't know. The remaining three gang members look for Tara around the garage. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Tara appears from behind the second gang member and shoots her in the head. Ah! Uh. She then proceeds to fight the remaining two gang members. One of them runs out of rounds on her gun and picks up a ratchet. Tara puts one of her guns away and takes out her sword. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> The two fight each other with their melee weapons until Tara knocks her weapon out of her hand and stabs her once, killing her. No. With one gang member left alive, Tara walks up to him. You're still alive? Get over here. Tara grabs a hold of the last gang member and holds him hostage. Get me a new engine for my motorcycle now. If I help you, will you let me go? Yeah, now go. The remaining gang member goes to the storage to get a new motorcycle engine for Tara while she has her gun drawn on him. Now, replace my old engine with the new one. That's all I came in here for. What kind of a business is this? The gang member replaces Tara's old motorcycle engine with a new one. And before he could finish, Tara interrupts him. That's good enough. I'll do the rest of this shit myself. Good. So you can let me... let me go now, right? Yeah, I'll let you go. To hell. <laughs> Tara then kills off the last gang member in such a tragic way. We see Tara leaving the garage with her motorcycle, but not before reminding another garage customer nearby to not go inside the place. Hey, don't go in there. It's the worst garage you'll ever get your vehicle repaired in, unless you're lucky to defend yourself in there to get what you need. Just some advice. <laughs> Tara happily drives off after giving such a safe and friendly advice to the innocent individual about not entering the garage. The second customer goes in anyway to see all the dead bodies and blood all over the place. Holy fuck. That badass girl on the motorcycle was right. We're now in the city, where we meet a courier named Ginny Rainfall, who is an ordinary, shy person in her late teens, who is currently living on her own, and is trying her best to get somewhere in life. Away from her abusive mother, and not hearing from her dad in a long while, she receives a letter from her dad at the post office, while collecting mail in her delivery bag to deliver to people. A post office worker comes in to give her the letter, which was with the other pieces of sorted mail from the stack. Miss Rainfall, time to get going. You've got mail to deliver. Oh, and this is for your father. Don't lose it, and make sure he gets it as soon as possible. Hey, make sure that letter you got there is in mine, too. My boyfriend has the nerve of sending me love letters to try to lure me back to him. He's an asshole. Come on, watch the language. <laughs> and save the boy trouble for when you're not at work. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> this is America. We can say whatever we want. Freedom of speech, girls. She then heads out on her bike to go deliver the people's mail including her father's letter. Along the way, a man comes out of nowhere and stops Ginny's bike, causing her to fall off of it. Ah! 
The man is quickly revealed to be a crime lord named Troy Payne. Then, his girlfriend and accomplice Naomi Sheen and a couple of their bodyguards come to join him while he interrogates Ginny. Well, well, well. What do we have here? An innocent girl delivering a little piece of mail. Simple stuff, isn't it? My dear Naomi. Sounds simple enough to me, babe. I don't know about you, but there might be something important in that little letter. Can we see the letter, young lady? Staying quiet for a brief moment, Ginny shakes her head at Troy and Naomi. Oh, would you look at that? She doesn't want us to see it. She just shook her head at us. <laughs> Troy begins to walk a little closer to Ginny while she tries to move back from him. I can smell what's in that letter. Something that's interesting. Something we'd like to invest in. Something to dig up out of that letter. Naomi begins to walk up close to Ginny. Come on, give us the letter. We just want to look at it for a little bit and then give it back. It's not so hard to do. We won't open it. Ginny shakes her head again and continues to move away from Naomi and Troy. Let's see. A girl who is a courier, a quiet one, can't even lend us the letter. It must be for someone else. Troy walks up close to Ginny again, but this time grabs a hold of her. Who's it for, sweetie? Your friend? Your brother? Mommy or daddy? My father. His name is Joseph Rainfall. I don't know who you guys are. Oh, so you're his daughter then. You have no idea. <laughs> we know who your dad is. He's one of the most popular couriers in this town. And since you're his daughter, or maybe you aren't, I don't know. I just want to see that damn letter. No, I won't let you have it. It's important. Not only to me, but my father. And no one else. So why don't you guys go away? Naomi pushes Troy out of her way to get in Ginny's face. At this point, Ginny is getting really scared. How about you listen to me and my boyfriend, you little brat? You give us the letter or we'll knock you out cold and shave your pretty little head. Okay? No, I can't. I won't let you guys have it. Ginny proceeds to run away from Troy and Naomi. Stop her. Troy and Naomi's bodyguards go after Ginny and successfully catch her. They proceed to hold her up. <laughs> That's enough. Hold her up. <laughs> Troy walks up to Ginny and tries to punch her. Naomi walks up to him and stops him in the process. Hold on, Troy. You're not supposed to hit women. But I can. Naomi slaps Ginny. <clears throat> Holy shit. You just slapped Mr. Rainfall's daughter. You wouldn't appreciate that. Naomi then takes the letter from Ginny. Thanks for the letter. We'll make sure we give it to your father while you just sit here and cry in pain. You guys, put it down. The bodyguards put Ginny down to the ground. <laughs> Ginny struggles to get up. Someone, please help me. Now she wants help. All right, guys, let's let her have it. Don't you lay another finger on her. After hearing such a heroic voice from out of nowhere, Troy, Naomi, and the bodyguards look around to find the person who raised his voice at them. Then a wise old man named Ed Gamma comes out of nowhere to the rescue and fights off the bodyguards using his staff while Troy and Naomi back away to watch him, wondering who he is and where he came from. Who in the hell is that? I don't know but he looks like he came from the West. Ed gets finished with shaking the bodyguards off of Ginny before getting out his assault rifle and points it at them. The bodyguards return to Troy and Naomi. You all get on out of here, or I'll blast you right back to hell. With what? You don't have shit to blast us away with, old man. Wanna bet? 
Ed shoots a few rounds at them, only hitting the ground. Ah! What the? Let's not do this. Let's go! I've got the let it too! Who gives a shit now? Troy, Naomi, and the bodyguards escape in a van as Ed puts his assault rifle away, gets Jenny off the ground, and carries her to his car. Don't you worry, darling. You'll feel better soon. I gotta get you out of here now. Ed puts Jenny in his car and then gets inside the car. He drives off and takes her to a safe place. He also makes sure that she is okay before arriving at his place shortly after. Jenny is now in a bed inside of a nice little house of Ed Gamma, who is sitting right next to her and waiting for her to wake up. Wake up. Wake up, young lady. Yes, wake up. You were almost killed out there. Had to save you. Jenny wakes up. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, take it easy. You've been knocked out for almost a week. Relax. Take a deep breath. Why don't you tell me your name? My name is Ginny. Ginny Rainfall. Rainfall? Are you a courier? Yeah. How did you know that? <laughs> well, I knew your daddy. But I don't think he ever introduced you to me. Because I was living with my mother, who was so abusive to me, I had to get out and start my life over. I actually haven't seen my father since I was 14. I was poor, and I didn't have any money, so I made a decision to become a courier and deliver letters and packages to get somewhere. I suppose my dad works at a different post office. I knew your father for 10 years. He was very well known by the community. And he'd always talk about his wife and how much of a pain she was to him. Yeah, he had to get out too. My dad wanted me to go with him, but my mom wouldn't let me. He had always wanted me to be a courier like him because I loved to write and send letters to my friends and relatives. I didn't become a courier until I had to get away from my abusive mother. My mom would take my letters after I wrote them, read them, and then rip them. Yeah, your daddy told me she did some pretty terrible things to you. Do you want to talk about that? No. Talking about that will make me cringe. And it would be frustrating for me to remember what she did to me right now. It's too much. Okay, we won't talk about it then. My name is Ed Gamma. I used to be a courier, like your daddy, but now I'm a doctor and a surgeon. And yes, we were long-time friends. Okay. Great. Sorry, but I have to go. Jenny gets out of the bed, grabs her bag, and goes to look inside, only to find that her father's letter is missing. Oh, slow down, little lady. My father's letter... It's not with me. I think those people out there took it when they were attacking me. Please, Ed. Just call me Mr. Gamma. Mr. Gamma, sorry. So, do you know who they are? There were two people that came up to me, attacked me, and almost killed me. Did you see them take my letter before you came to the rescue and scared them away? Yeah, I did. Didn't know what it was. You say it was your daddy's letter? Yes. Let me tell you about them people. I know who they are. Their names are Troy Payne and Naomi Sheen. They're the two most popular crime lords in town. They're like heroes to the crooks. They're like the Joker and Harley Quinn, Bonnie and Clyde. Whoever you can imagine, you know? They pretty much get away with hurting innocent folks like you if they don't get their way or get what they want. The folks who like them so much, well, they do anything to defend them. Whenever someone tries to stand up and fight, them folks gonna beat them down or kill them. They are crazy. Would it be bad if I went after them? Wouldn't be so bad, really. 
You gotta be strong and brave if you want to go out there and deal with those savages. You gotta be a real tough son of a bitch, or tough daughter of a bitch. You gonna deal with them by yourself. I want to find them and get my letter back, no matter what. Are you sure? Yes. My father's letter has something important in it, and on the front, the address is on there. So if they try to go to my father's house and hurt him, I'm not going to let that happen. I just wish I have somebody that could teach me how to fight back. Jenny walks to the front door while Ed follows her. Is that right? Well, I got a granddaughter. She's got a boyfriend. They're armed and dangerous as far as I'm concerned. They could help you, I guess. Can you take me to them? I don't know. You look too pretty to be going out and causing some destruction. Are you sure? Please, Mr. Gamma. It's very important to me and my father. I've got to defend him and myself. But if I'm not going to do it, then who will? All of a sudden, Ed remains quiet as he stares into Ginny's beautiful eyes and eventually decides to help her. Ed escorts Ginny to the weapons room, where they come across Tara and Mick, who are running the weaponry, sitting down in chairs. Howdy, y'all. Hi. Hey. Brought you someone who wants to see you. This here's Ginny Rainfall. Her daddy was a good friend of mine. I have never seen her before. Jenny, this is my granddaughter, Tara Prancer. And, uh, that's her boyfriend, Mick. At your service. I know you. You were the victim of John Yest. Yeah, obviously. That motherfucker should have left me and my sister Wendy alone. That's why I had to kill him. It's bad enough he had to record us being assaulted and put us on the damn internet for the people to see. Uh, Tara, we actually killed him together. Yeah, we did. Sorry about that, babe. Yeah, I helped her kill John. I was off duty until I had to quit for good. I used to be a police officer. When Tara got out, she confessed her feelings to me and I felt the same. Then we went out a date and made out at the end. Crazy, right? Yeah, I almost forgot that he had my back. And my friend Cassie. Well, she's out of town, so it's just me, Mick, and my grandfather. Me and Mick have been specializing in the merchant business and martial arts training ever since. I'm the merchant, and he's more of the martial arts trainer than a merchant. That's cool. Yep. Although, I did have some other personal business to handle, like getting my motorcycle fixed at a garage recently, where the people working there were actually gang members who were looking for trouble. I saw one guy entering there and found out that he never made it back out alive. I sure as hell thought I was going to be a goner when I went in there, but nope. I took care of them before they could kill me, take my money, and keep the motorcycle. My motorcycle's over there, by the way. <laughs> Mick gets out of his chair and walks a little closer to Jenny. We can help you with any kind of problem that you might be facing right now. Taryn and I know how to kick some ass, and we might even teach you how to do the same. Actually, I have two problems. Well, what are they? Do the names Troy Payne and Naomi Sheen ring any bells? You've got to be kidding. No. I wish I was. I'm actually their next victim. What did they do to you? They attacked me and took away something that was very important to me and my father. I want to find them and kill them. Damn. The couple sure are dangerous. All of us know who they are. The next thing you know, they could make a documentary about their lives hurting innocent people. Make a porno or some shit like that. Tara then gets out of her chair and walks up to Jenny, kindly pushing Mick out of her way. What do you need? Do you want to learn how to shoot and fight? To me, it seems like you need something more than training if you want to go out there and deal with Troy, Naomi, and their stereotypical ass lickers. It's simple. Teach me how to shoot and how to fight so that I can go out there and rip their bloody hearts out. Wow, that's kind of crude and dark. I know. If you want to get dark, then I'll get dark with you. I want to stab those shitheads and cut their hearts out. I also want to rip Troy's dick off and shove it in his girlfriend's mouth, just so they can bleed to death and choke to death. Uh, okay. That's dark enough. (laughs) Good. I really don't like talking about shit like that. I just do it. 
Now, let's get you into training. Ginny and Tara are now outside Ed's house in the backyard, where Tara is going to teach Ginny how to shoot. She has a fake soldier statue facing Ginny to help her concentrate on her target. All right, Ginny. First, I want to show you how to use a firearm. Here, take it. Tara gives Ginny a pistol. Your target is this fake statue of a soldier with a rifle. You can aim at his head, you can aim at his chest, but try not to miss any shots. Funny, because my father was supposed to teach me how to shoot a gun. Well, you got me teaching you right now. Aim at your target. Look down at the sight of your gun. Got it. Jenny begins to draw her pistol at the soldier statue, and Tara helps her with her aiming, precisely moving her gun arm up to make sure she hits the target. Someone once told me, when he was teaching me how to shoot, that the bullets can be your friend. They can be your Avengers, too. Who told you that? Another merchant. His name is Wade. Okay. I'm curious now. Whatever happened to him? Nothing. He just kept on moving. According to Mick, he works in a military base now. Well, I'm glad he didn't give up his job. Tara begins to suffer a small concussion which causes her to have a small headache. Ow. What's wrong, Tara? Nothing. I just have a small headache, I guess. Not only that, I'm kind of seeing things as well. How's this, Tara? Jenny starts shooting at the statue, hitting the torso twice, and then the head four times. Nice. After the shots were fired, Jenny gives Tara the pistol back. Fast learner, eh? You know it. You're becoming me now. I think Mick wants to see you now. Now, we see Ginny with Mick at an open area nearby Ed's backyard, where Mick is going to be teaching Ginny hand-to-hand combat. Pay attention, Ginny. I'll show you some moves to help you kick ass. First I'll strike, then you block my attacks. Ready when you are, Mick. Go! Mick strikes at Ginny first, as she tries to block his attacks. Mick then stops attacking her. Cool, you seem to get it. I like that. I'm kind of special to you guys, I guess. It's nothing but luck. (laughs) Alright, so moving on. Now I'm going to block your attacks. Should just throw whatever you got at me. Got it? You bet. Alright, strike. Jenny smacks Mick in the face and backs away from him, smiling in the process. (laughs) Trying to be Miss Badass 2.0, I see. Who says I'm better than Tara? True, no one knows who you are except us. But once you go back out to the real world and show these people who you really are, they'll shit their pants and bow down to you. Alright, let's do this again. We then get a montage of Ginny training to become a killer as she continues to fight Mick, keeps shooting at random fake targets with Tara, and even working out back inside Ed's house. We're now back inside Ed's house and inside Tara's room, where we see Tara and Mick kissing each other until they stop. Oh, you're so great, Mick. I know. Tara then pushes Mick to her bed and makes him watch her taking off her top, revealing her naked body covered in a bra. She then gets in bed with Mick, who is feeling a little nervous about what they're going to do next. Then, the two make out in bed, off screen. A song is playing on the radio in the process. Jenny goes to Tara's room's door and knocks on her door once until she hears no response. And then, Ed comes to escort Jenny away from her door. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Just let him be. Later that night, Jenny is now laying on a couch, sleeping, and is dreaming of the younger version of herself, watching her mother arguing with her husband from the distance. In a dark background, which leaves her with a cringy feeling. You fucking asshole. You don't think about every minute of me, do you? You don't even remember who the hell I am anymore. Oh, I'm insane. What do you do for a living, huh? Delivering mail and getting paid less? We ought to be getting ourselves to a better place than paying rent here all the damn time, don't you think? What about our daughter? Oh, she pretends to like me, huh? No, she loves me, and she knows it. Do you, dear? I'm sorry you have to sit through this. She doesn't like me? Bullshit! 
She's the one who doesn't like you, and I don't like you either. But you know what? I got something that'll shut you up for good. Ginny's mother then takes out her gun and draws it at her husband. The young Ginny then pushes her before she could fire at him. We then cut back to real life, where Ginny quickly wakes up from her dream. She then tries to clear her mind and forget about what happened to her family in the past, feeling a bit upset and bothered about it in the process. She then thinks about the incident that happened between her, Troy, and Naomi, showing us flashbacks of it for a brief moment. Don't worry, Father. I will come to you with a letter and hug you. I promise. There's something that I have to do first. Those bad people took your letter and threw me to the ground. Now, they must die. Jenny is now in a different outfit and cutting her hair to make it a bit short in front of the mirror. She then looks at herself for a little bit before getting her weapons and heading out. The weapons she has are a pistol, a shotgun, and a knife. Ed then sees Ginny heading for the front door. Mr. Gamma, I'm heading out. Are you sure? Yes. Can you at least do me one more favor? Sure. You got your phone, right? Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and put Tara's number in there, please? Ginny takes her phone out while Ed gives her Tara's phone number, written on a piece of paper. Ginny then enters the number on her phone, saves it, and then puts her phone away. Tara told me to tell you that whenever you head off on your quest and you get into a really bad situation, you go on and give her a call, but only if it's an emergency. Sure thing, but not now. With the skills I have, I'll be ripping these guys a new one without any problem. However, you can tell Tara and Mick that I said thank you. Will do. And, um, uh, thank you for helping me, too. Not a problem. You're an innocent young lady, just like Tara is. Situation she went through left her odd, strange. She's got a different attitude. She used to be quite the sweetheart. <laughs> now she's insane. Ever since her sister Wendy died, she had been the same Tara I used to know. I get it, but this is my life we're talking about now. My life, my choices. They're all in jeopardy, and I must put a stop to it. Thank you, Mr. Gamma, and goodbye. Jenny goes to open the door, and before she could walk out, Ed interrupts her from leaving. When you do get to your father, tell myself hello. Thank you for being a good friend. I will. Don't let them people give you hell, make you look bad. And you go find that letter. Bring it to them. And y'all be careful out there. With Ed ending the conversation on a positive note, Jenny finally leaves the house and closes the door. Jenny heads back to the city to start looking for Troy and Naomi. Along the way, she sees a few troublemakers running around and passing by her and she even hears innocent people and troublemakers making rants about the dangerous couple. Troy Payne for president! Troy Payne and Naomi Sheen are such complete jokes to the human race, and I hope that one day I get to kill them and send them to hell. We should make a movie about Troy and Naomi and about how they're destroying us all. People are dying. Someone help us. We need help. Forget you people. Troy and Naomi for life. I hope you die under their hands. Oh, shut up. One day you'll get to see the two crime lords suffer. If I hear any more shit about Troy and Naomi, I'm gonna kill all of you. Come at me, bitch. Let's see who ends up on the ground first. Everything around her seems to be unsettling and corrupted, as expected. All of a sudden, Jenny comes across a little dog, and she tries to interact with it. Oh, hi, doggy. It's okay. I won't hurt you. I just want a friend. 
Could you maybe tell me where Troy and Naomi are? Oh, come on. Don't be that way. The dog then starts to attack Jenny. I see a dog. Oh, let's catch it. That's a nice doggy. Good doggy. Hey, be careful with that dog. You don't know where it's been. All of a sudden, a couple of guys come out of nowhere to get the dog as it runs away from Jenny, and they chase after it, leaving her alone again. Jenny then gets up from the ground. Damn. Jenny proceeds to look for Troy and Naomi, while feeling a bit disappointed that she couldn't befriend a dog the way she could. Later, she comes across a lone survivor named Lee, who is sitting in an alley, sleeping, while holding a knife. Hi. Do you need help? You look like you need it. With Jenny coming close to Lee, he quickly wakes up to find her up in his face, acting like she's going to attack him, and charges at her with his knife up to her throat. Who are you? Calm down. I'm not going to hurt you. You seem to be more pissed off than I am. Okay. Since you're not going to hurt me, I think I can trust you. It's just that all these people here look at me as someone to pick on. I ain't who I used to be anymore. Right. Now, what is your name? My name is Lee. And who the hell are you? I'm Ginny Rainfall. Wait, Rainfall? Which one are you? We know about your father because he was the popular courier, but... You must be one as well, aren't you? Yes, I'm his daughter. And a courier, too. But I'm no one special. I'm on a mission, as a matter of fact. Cool. And what mission is that? I'm looking for Troy Payne and Naomi Sheen. You know them? Yeah, they're a piece of shit. Make such ridiculous couple. Lee quietly backs away from Jenny and takes his knife off her throat. So, I'm not the only person who wants justice. Sign me up. I want to join you. Sure. What can you do to defend me? And what are you good at? Melee. That's what I'm kind of good at. I'm a crappy shooter, but I'm trying to shoot straight. Lucky for you, I do need somebody to travel with. I just better hope you're not one of those assholes out there. Come on. Jenny proceeds to walk away while Lee is struggling to get back on his feet. Jenny then looks back to see what he is doing. Well, are you coming? I'm trying. My legs hurt a bit. Do you need help? Nah, I got it. I can walk it off. Lee manages to walk a bit faster to get to Jenny, and the two set off to look for Troy and Naomi together. So, what's your purpose of getting back at Troy and Naomi? They had his people assault me numerous times, on numerous occasions. Their people are a bunch of crowd followers, sympathizers, and are as evil as the couple. They do anything for them, no matter what. I'll bet that you have the gut to take them down. You look like you're hungry. I'm starving. Then let's eat. Why are you after Troy and Naomi? They have something in mind that's personal and important. It's a letter from my father. I'm supposed to bring it to him. Wow. Okay. Do you know where they are? Yeah. Um, no. I wish I did, though. That's why we're going to look all over the city. Should be fun. Sure. Ginny and Lee then come across a resident named Macy, who is happy to see them, because she thought the two could help her and a bunch of innocent people in town, judging by seeing Ginny with firearms and Lee with just a knife. Holy shit! I see freedom fighters! Are you guys freedom fighters? What does it look like to you? We actually are freedom fighters. Oh, good! We need freedom fighters all over the place. There's a bunch of gang members and terrorists lurking everywhere. Ahem. 
My name is Macy, and I wish to be just like you guys. So, tell me, who are you guys going after? Troy Payne. And Naomi Sheen. Really? Troy and Naomi, the dangerous crime lord couple? Someone should give you a fucking medal for showing some balls and actually doing something about this. I'm so sick and tired of seeing innocent people getting attacked and killed by those shitheads. But good luck trying to find them and kill them. They're so powerful, even their followers are as bad as them. It'll all come to an end soon, trust me. We must go. Come on, Lee. Stay strong, sister. Jenny and Lee politely walk away from Macy. Good luck, guys! Just remember, don't let them get you guys caught up with their evil ways. <sighs> you know, I kind of miss when this world is once a nice place to be in. Jenny and Lee make their way to a nearby alleyway, where they would soon find something strange in there, but decide whether they should go that way or turn around. Does this way look like a shortcut to you? I don't know, but we should check it out anyways. Are you sure? Positive. Before Ginny and Lee could enter the alleyway with caution, three Troy Payne supporters come out of nowhere and get in their way, begging them to support Troy and Naomi. Payne for president! Payne forever! Support Payne, or you'll be sorry. Uh, what? Do you love Troy Payne? No, I don't. Why don't you love him? Yeah, everyone loves pain. Well, I don't. Me neither. Now, would you excuse us? Ginny and Lee try to move out of the supporters' way, but they keep blocking them. Why? He's the best person around. I have a highly unpopular opinion about him, and I don't think you guys are ready to hear it. What unpopular opinion? Are you sure you want to hear it? Please and thank you, ma'am. I think he's a worthless piece of shit who owes me a lot. He's got something that means a lot to me, and I'd kill him and his girlfriend just to get it back. Now, would you guys please excuse us? Why do you have to be hostile towards us? This is too personal for us. That punk has something I want back, too. Thank you guys for your time. Why do you hate this guy? What about the stuff he's done to us? There are people like us who don't deserve being attacked by people like Troy Payne and Naomi Sheen. And we need to do something about it and kill those fuckers. You don't like Troy Payne? Him and Naomi attacked me. And you expect me to like them? You guys are lost and crazy. He's a complete shitface who deserves to die. Him and his bitch. How dare you say such bad things about Troy Payne. You need to apologize for saying stuff like that about him. That won't happen. When are you guys going to wake up and realize what's actually going on? He is hurting you. And y'all don't care? Guys, wake up, okay? He's worthless, and we're going after him. Goodbye. One of the followers then gets in Jenny's face. Over my dead body? Dude, You're letting him get to your head. Just stop. This is personal for me. And this is personal for me too. You're talking crap about my idol. And you're not going to go after him. The angry follower takes out his knife. What are you going to do with that knife? I don't know. I'm just going to stab you with it. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, it's not? No. And why is that? Huh? You want to find out? You bet I do, bitch! Come on! The angry follower tries to stab Jenny, but she quickly reverses the attack, grabs and holds him by his arm. I can break your arm, because I don't give a flying fuck. That's right. Show him how you really handle trash. Jenny pushes the angry follower back. Fuck off! Let's go, Lee. Suck on my left nut. Just when Ginny and Lee were about to leave the followers, she turns back around, in shock, to make the angry supporter repeat what he said to her. What did you say? Go away. No, I want to hear what you just said. No way. I don't want trouble. 
No way. You're already in trouble. Now, what did you just say to me, damn it? I said, suck my left nut, you harlot. Jenny walks up close to the angry follower, snatches his knife from him, and stabs him repeatedly, killing him, and drops him to the ground in anger. Ah! Pervert. She then turns her attention to the remaining two followers, hoping they would start fights with her. Anyone else want to join him? No, we're good, actually. We never liked him anyway. He is a fucking pervert. That guy watches a lot of disgusting X-rated shit, too. We're gonna go. See you later. Let's run. The remaining two followers run away from the furious Ginny and Lee, fearing for their lives, and we don't hear from them again. (laughs) And I bet that felt good, didn't it? Well, I do deserve some respect around here. You do too, right? (laughs) I know I do. Some of these folks roaming around here need to start showing us innocent people respect, too. Half of them are crazy-ass people who have no chill whatsoever. Shall we go? After you. Lead the way, princess. After all the trouble with the followers, Ginny and Lee finally enter the alleyway. Getting inside the alleyway, they come across a group called the Three Bears. The leader of the group is Brother Tag, while his other members are Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer. They see our two heroes passing by and goes to stop them to get their attention. Hello, strangers. Shoot, we're company. I'm Brother Tag. And these are my friends, Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer. What's up, Tuts? You don't seem bad to us. We're the Three Bears, and you guys are trespassing through our area. Why is that? We are going to see Troy Payne and Naomi Sheen. That's right. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Oh, we got two trespassers trying to make it to Troy's place. That's nice! Yeah. (laughs) Alright, seriously, shut up. Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer stop and back away from Brother Tag. Brother Tag then walks up close to Ginny and Lee to question them about their business. His ignorance would later start to build up during the conversation. What's the purpose of looking for Troy and Naomi? We want to kill them. They have something that we want back, and it means a lot to us. You can't kill them. They didn't do nothing to (laughs) y'all. You're just very frustrated. These people are like gods to us. They give us what we need to survive. They're like the mayors of this town, or our presidents. Without them, this place would fall apart as fast as a ball knocking down a tower made of building blocks. I thought it had already fallen apart. The thing is, we're not going to let you guys through just because you have all this beef with our gods of the world. Yeah, so whatever problems you have with Troy and Naomi, forget about it and go about your day. Now turn back around that way. No way. Hey lady, do you want to get killed or something? Come do it. Come kill me. Lady, are you out of your mind? Don't you guys know that we can end your lives right here? Access has been denied, so turn back around and get out of here. Now. So, do it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. You want to do this right here? Come on. (laughs) Are you two dating? No, don't change the subject. Come fight me. Yeah, that's real nice. Sticking up for your girlfriend. I hope she sees how big of a coward you are. For what? Trying to fight you? No way. I'm a man, and you're obviously not. Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer come to push Lee to the ground and start to beat him up. Jenny intervenes to try saving her friend. Ah! Get the hell off of him! Jenny pushes Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer away from Lee, causing both to hit the ground. Stupid bitch! Die, motherfuckers! Brother Tag comes to fight Jenny, while Lee tries to defend himself against Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer. He finds a way to attack them by making them hitting each other with their own weapons as they use melee weapons. Ah! Meanwhile, Ginny fights Brother Tag using her knife while Brother Tag uses his machete. 
Eventually, after trying to stab Brother Tag multiple times with no luck, Ginny gets an idea in her head to kick him in the crotch and take his machete to stab him once. She does just that, killing Brother Tag in the process. She then grabs a hold of Sister Sawyer and holds Brother Tag's machete up to her neck as she breaks up the fight. Stop! This ends here! Look what you made me do! Sister Sawyer then struggles to look at Brother Tag's corpse while still being held with a machete up to her throat. And Brother Korg then looks at the corpse, both finding out that Ginny killed their leader. That's your leader right there. Dead and gone. Unless you want to join him, I would suggest you guys let us by. Understand? (laughs) Understood, ma'am. We'll be on our way now. First, you should apologize to me and my friend here for attacking us. Yes, ma'am. Both of us are very sorry. Tag had always been a dickless coward. You're free to go. Yeah, just don't shoot us. We deserve to have respect like you guys, right? Uh, Just go. See you later. Come on, Sawyer. Brother Korg and Sister Sawyer run away from Ginny and Lee, and they leave the alleyway, allowing the two to pass through. Don't worry. We're going to get them back. Hey, Ginny. (coughs) Thanks. Thanks for saving my life. Those are some wannabe tough guys. Yeah. At least one of them is dead. The leader. At least, I think that's him. His friends aren't shit without him. I'm gonna take some of this crap with me. I'm gonna go now. Try to catch up. Jenny leaves Lee with Brother Tag's corpse as he tries looting for some of his things that he might need for survival. As the two freedom fighters leave, a messenger comes out of nowhere with the footages already recorded on her camera of what just happened, leading us to believe that she was spying on them the whole time. She then flees from the scene. Meanwhile, inside Naomi's hideout, Naomi is sitting at her office, playing video games, until the messenger, who is revealed to be Sarah, comes in to report to Naomi about what she had seen. Hello, Naomi. Interrupted by Sarah, Naomi pauses her game to see her. Sarah! What brings you here this time? I have a couple of footages I want to share with you. Very well, then. Sarah takes out her video camera and gives it to Naomi. These are some videos of a mysterious-looking girl and her companion on my camera. They have been causing a bit of chaos since I've gotten here. Will you take a look at them? As a response to Sarah's question, Naomi takes the camera from her and goes to plug it into her computer to take a look at the footages recorded by Sarah. The two girls would then watch the footages of Ginny and Lee causing trouble on the streets. Hmm, this is interesting. What's the purpose of these two freedom fighters going after our people? Do you know their plot? And when did you first see them? Well, you see, I spotted the girl first when she was meeting the sky. They talked about getting together to seek revenge by going after you and Mr. Payne. Since then, I've been following them to see what they were going to do. And they did harm a few people. Did they really kill them? Well, they did kill at least two people just now. I saw them do it. And I'm not sure where they're heading to now. I'm sure it'll take them a bit to find us, Naomi. Do you think we have something that they want back? Yes, ma'am. The girl said something about getting her letter back. And her partner, well, he said that he was fed up with getting bullied by guys all the time. I don't care about a partner, but I do care about the girl and a little plot more. I don't have the letter, but Troy does, and I'm sure he's taking good care of it. But he hasn't opened it, at least. That's what he told me. (laughs) I'll keep the camera. Naomi shuts off her computer and walks back to her gaming chair. She then sits back in it. The same girl was trying to deliver that letter to her dad, and me and Troy disturbed her while she was doing a job delivering that letter. We then took it and attacked her, if you wanted to know what happened first. 
don't know how that girl got back into shape, but this other person came out of nowhere, scared me and Troy off with his big gun, and saved a life. So, with the girl coming back alive and well, she's coming for us, right? Yes, that's what it looks like. Okay. I want you to go back out there and find them, Sarah. Make sure they don't get far. Hell, it would be better if you tell the whole town to watch out for the two freedom fighters. You may leave. I'll tell Troy about the news. Well do, Naomi. Thank you. Sarah leaves Naomi's hideout as Naomi takes out her phone to call her boyfriend Troy about the incident. Hi, Troy. I love you, dear. Do you know that girl we attacked a week ago? She's back and looking for us. I think it has something to do with that letter. Do you still have it? Yeah, I get it. But I got something you might like. Okay, then. See you there. Bye! Naomi hangs up the call. <laughs> 